Good evening. Happy holidays. This is me pretending to be cold. I'm in Southern California. It's like, I think it's 58 degrees out. Brrr, I'm freezing. Anyway, I thought since I have lipstick on, nice and red, um, I thought I'd read another chapter. So, uh, let's see. The last chapter we read was chapter five, and Perry was chasing Dev all over the Fullerton train station, and she had just yelled at him to stop running, you idiot, and he stopped running. So, he stopped in the middle of the stairs. Chapter six. That usually doesn't work. She said as Dev lifted his hands over his head. Coming down out of the shadows was a uniformed police officer. His face was clean shaven, pink and cherubic, his blue eyes wide enough to see white outlines. His gun was drawn and pointed at her brother. Holy hell. Perry took a step back, her hands held away from her body. Officer, don't shoot. Dev, do everything he says. The officer shouted orders over her voice. Hands on your head. Turn around. Perry tried to shout above his commands. Don't shoot him. Dev, listen to him. The three stood, suspended in the moment. Dev with his hands waving upward. Perry and the officer screaming commands. A low, booming voice cut through the chaos. Everyone calm down now. A second officer stepped out, past the younger one. Short and muscular and tanned, Perry was certain he juggled tractor tires for fun. He said something to his partner, looked at Dev, and demonstrated with his own arms what he wanted Dev to do. Dev placed his hands on top of his head and turned around. The second officer nodded and proceeded down the steps, handcuffs already out. The first policeman began shouting again. I said, hands on your head. His hands are up. Oh. Perry saw that the officer was coming for her. Hey, no, I was bringing him in. Who are you? He motioned with the gun for her to obey. Perry clasped her hands on top of her head and turned. I'm a private investigator. You can check the wallet in my bag for my ID. Miss Perry, are you still working? Benny had followed yet again. You said you were just looking for a friend. I was, Benny. I'm not working. It's complicated. Still nervous about the shouting and the guns, she knew it could easily get worse again with Benny on the scene. Where was that freaking train to LA and why wasn't Benny on it? That's my friend. Benny pointed at her with a half-eaten Danish. You let her go. The officer's hands shook as he brought Perry's arms down behind her back. She could feel the sweat on his palms, heard his ragged breathing. He twisted her wrists behind her to accommodate the handcuffs, and she was happy for her recent yoga classes to keep her shoulders from cramping. He's young and tense. Won't take much to set him off. It's okay, Benny, she managed to smile. I'm just going to answer some questions and I'll be home. He did not look convinced. It doesn't look okay. I'm going to call Mr. Skip. Down the stairs, the officer ordered. Yes, sir. Let me take it slow. We don't want to fall. She gritted her teeth as the officer gripped her arm. Yes, call Skip, Benny. I'm being taken to the Fullerton Police Department. Benny's eyes were wide and he nodded like a bobblehead doll. I'll get help, Miss Perry. You can count on me. At the bottom of the stairs, the officer gave her a quick mechanical pat down. No gun? No. I thought you were a PI. She stared at his still pink cheeks. He couldn't have been more than 25. A mere puppy. Like I said, check my wallet. You'll find my license. But no permit for conceal and carry? I don't like guns. She flinched. Two years of saying that, but now she meant it. Me and Sam Spade. Who? She blinked at his cluelessness. Bartender at Craftsman. What's he got to do with it? 
Perry shook her head and noticed Benny still hovering with the small crowd that had gathered. She nodded at him as the officer dragged her into the waiting patrol car. Call Mr. Skip, Ben. Benny stepped up to the officer, his expression as stern and earnest as a trial attorney. You are making a big mistake. Miss Perry is a private investigator. She never breaks the law. Except for the time she broke into that man's office. But she didn't take anything. He was already dead. And when she picked the lock, Benny! Perry wished her hands were free so she could slap them over his mouth. Stop helping and call Skip. You don't have to yell at me. Sorry, she did not have time for this. Please call. I'm counting on you. Benny's so helpful. And Perry's in a pickle because she was just caught with a guy that had a bolo out, out on him. Whatever will happen. Well, maybe we'll find out in chapter seven. In the meantime, have a good evening.